the town you had, you know, this dictator, I can't even, I can't the even understand this water. I, Robert Gabriel Mugabe, hereby formally tender my resignation as the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe with immediate effect. Teacher, anti-colonial revolutionary to elected prime minister, then a ruthless dictator. The evolution of Robert Mugabe from a leader who was steering Zimbabwe to a bright economic future to a despot who bled his country dry and disposed of opponents who dared stand in his way. But Mugabe was able to use the outcry from Britain and elsewhere to his advantage and present himself as a hero who stood up to imperialism. We have fought for our land. We have fought for our sovereignty, small as we are. We have won our independence and we are prepared to shed our blood in sustenance and maintenance and protection of that independence. And that's how he first came to international attention, leading a guerrilla movement to overthrow Rhodesia's white government. The country's Prime Minister, Ian Smith, had tried to resist majority rule by declaring unilateral independence from Britain in 1965. Only 4% of the country's population was white. Having previously been jailed, Mugabe led a campaign of violent resistance from exile in Mozambique. The bloody Bush War throughout the 1970s eventually led to a negotiated settlement. At Lancaster House, Britain's Foreign Secretary Lord Carrington brokered a deal which saw Mugabe and rival revolutionary Joshua Nkomo temporarily united. <laughs> British authorities oversaw the democratic elections which followed and Robert Mugabe triumphed. He was congratulated by Prince Charles as majority rule finally came to the new Zimbabwe. Finally, a formal handover from Britain, and a new nation was born. Initially, the country prospered. White settlers and their descendants were encouraged to stay, and Zimbabwe was held up as an example of what could be achieved at a time when South Africa's white rulers still clung to apartheid. Margaret Thatcher came to Harare full of praise. We can see places like this where it has been so very successful, whatever the problems, it's been the patient negotiation which has solved them. And I think that does give a very good example for others to follow. Mugabe had sacked his one-time partner Joshua Nkomo and his ZAPU party was merged with Mugabe ZANU to form ZANU-PF. Mugabe was consolidating his power. But 12 years after independence, and with British colonial heritage still celebrated, Zimbabwe was a country which seemed forward-looking and at peace with itself. A lot of the uh, ex-Rhodesians that left here are trying to get back here. The former prime minister stayed on in the country while cautioning against Mugabe's Marxist policies. If we can change from a government that believes in communism to one that believes in the free enterprise system, then we're fine. We have a wonderful country here. But with white farmers still owning the bulk of the land, veterans of the war and the unemployed grew impatient. A dispute with Britain over compensation for land redistribution saw farmers intimidated, beaten or even murdered. Mugabe's government allowed it to happen, then facilitated it and encouraged it ignoring court rulings that it was illegal. I'm now going to have a reinforcement from Harare to come and take more farm. How can you surrender something willingly that you've lived on for 60 years? We shall have to sell all the malata, I suppose, to get our, try and get our money back and this sort of thing, and gum poles and what have you. We'll try and sell all that uh, before we go, and all our tobacco and maize and cattle, and uh, we won't put in a wheat crop, and uh, then we'll wish the comrades the very best of British luck. Decades of agricultural experience departed, voluntarily or forcibly. 
The consequence was that a country which was once regarded as the breadbasket of Africa began to starve. Harvests shrank, shelves were empty, and rampant inflation meant currency became virtually worthless. Through it all, Mugabe, who took on the title of president, blamed others for the problems. What we reject is the persistence of vestigial attitudes from the Rhodesian yesteryears, attitudes of a master race, master colour, master owner and master employer. The Commonwealth suspended Zimbabwe's membership. Mugabe opted to quit the organisation. International sanctions were imposed. Mugabe remained defiant. The Western countries, in particular the United States and the European Union, who imposed illegal sanctions against Zimbabwe, have, to our surprise, and that of SADC and the rest of Africa, refused to remove those sanctions. If they will not assist the inclusive government in rehabilitating our economy, could they please, please stop their filthy, clandestine, divisive antics? A country rich in natural resources should have been a beacon for Africa. Instead, life expectancy rates plummeted. The average Zimbabwean would be dead before their 40th birthday, while Mugabe was heading for his 90s. But our gold is ours. Our platinum belongs to us. Our diamonds are ours. They are not American, they are not British. Two of his country's cricketers took to the field wearing black armbands to protest what they called the death of democracy. They later went into exile. But still Mugabe's supporters lauded him, and time and time again he claimed success in elections, despite allegations of corruption and manipulation. When opposition leader Morgan Sveingarai threatened an upset at the polls, he was badly beaten by thugs. Supporters of his movement for democratic change saw their homes demolished under the guise of redevelopment. Perhaps out of conviction, maybe to deflect attention away from other problems, President Mugabe became an outspoken critic of homosexuality. If dogs and pigs know their mates, can human beings remain human beings if they do worse than pigs? We are asking you to arrest President Mugabe. And the On several occasions, Peter Tatchell and other gay activists attempted to make what they called citizens' arrests, accusing Mugabe of torture and the killing of political opponents. I have not. I have asked you, officer, to arrest President Mugabe under Section 134 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988. By 2008, Mugabe was forced to share power. Morgan Sveingarai became prime minister, but despite his advancing years, Mugabe was showing no inclination to step down as president. At this age, I still can go some distance, can't I? <laughs> and in the 2013 elections, he regained undisputed power in a disputed election. By now, the sharp Western suits were often exchanged for something more colourful. And at his side, his second wife, Grace. Gucci Grace, as she was dubbed because of her expensive shopping trips. She'd had an affair with Mugabe while she was a secretary and bore him children. But after the death of his first wife, they were married and her own political ambition grew. Earlier this year, she was accused of attacking a model during a trip to South Africa, but was allowed to return home without being prosecuted. Neighbouring leaders like Jacob Zuma maintained their high regard for Robert Mugabe despite international criticism. He was still a hero from the old struggle for black majority rule. Increasingly, he took comfort in his relationships with others who were also vilified by the West. You have sanctions. We have sanctions. <laughs> in this America, the imperialist at the top of it all. But age was catching up with him he often seemed frail. And as he weakened, opposition to him became emboldened. Rival MPs heckled a State of the Nation address. Overall economic performance to date 
indicates modest growth, particularly in the sector. Particularly in the sectors of agriculture, mining, in the sectors of agriculture, mining, tourism, construction, and telecommunication. In the past week, the army joined that opposition, intervening, but not, they insisted, seizing power. They were ensuring that Emerson Ngagwa, a former ally Mugabe sacked, would be his successor rather than his wife Grace. We don't want Mugabe, we want a we new want goblin to go, he's a goblin. It led to demonstrations and celebrations that many Zimbabweans thought they would never see. ZANU PF is a party of traditions. But in a rambling address to the nation, alongside army officers, his much expected resignation did not come. I, as the president of Zimbabwe and as their commander in chief, do acknowledge the issues they have drawn my attention to. The operation I have alluded to did not amount to a threat to our well-cherished constitutional order, nor was it a challenge to my authority as head of state and government. But just two days later, a U-turn caused by the threat of impeachment. This from the Speaker of Parliament. I, Robert Gabriel Mugabe, in terms of section 96, subsection 1 of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, hereby formally tender my resignation as the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe with immediate effect. streets they celebrated the end of the regime. In a rare interview with Sky News in 2004, Mugabe said he was merely a public servant. Uh, I'm uh, a man of the people, actually. I'm a born peasant family, and uh, I have a peasant background, and I know what it is, you know, to work with people, to hear them talk, to allow them to, you know, play a part uh, in uh, in your life. And this this is, I think, what has carried me to this day. And uh, although I sit here uh, as president, I know uh, that the that post I owe to the people. A man who spoke of his admiration for Britain's royal family will no longer enjoy the regal lifestyle that came with his office. The British government had previously stripped him of an honorary knighthood he received from the Queen. Now his own people have taken away a job he thought he had for life.